Hey, it's Jake with RoteUtah.com. It's a blistery cold day here in southern Utah, and I'm just out taking a look at the front yard fruit forest. Thought I'd share it with you. And in my hand, I've got a sapote that my friend Anthony Anderson sent me a seed of, and I just finished sprouting it in the sprouting room. I'm gonna take it back to the growing dome and uh, get it in a bigger pot. So just thought I'd share that with you. It's beautiful, look at this little guy. And we'll take it back there to the growing dome in a second. But here's the front yard food forest. Just wanted to share with you some of the things I'm doing to get these trees ready for winter. Probably an eight inch straw base. And they're still quite juvenile. And some of them, this, this one got stressed out early and dropped her leaves. Hoping she's okay. But you can see, the, uh, this is the swale. And the comfrey just really thickened up over the summer. And um, I went ahead and threw a bunch of compost in the swale. And you can see the levels of compost. This is about the layer of compost I threw across this whole front yard food forest. So a nice, you know, four or five inch layer of compost across the whole thing. And then each um, tree got a big ring of compost as well, followed by a big blanket of straw. That's the sea buckthorn. Really good. That's the male straight back there. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, and another thing I was really excited about the almond trees here, doing really well, uh, is the raspberries. I didn't make it to a few of them before they, oh, score. Looks like they are ooh, juicy and delicious. Look at that. So I'm really excited about raspberries. I think they're my favorite berry by far. Okay, so let's cruise straight down to the dome. You can check out another video, the update on these beds. This is zone three. Zone four of this food forest is the growing dome. So let's cruise in there. Growing spaces, growing dome here. Let's see if I can shop it. Oh, that's so much better. Probably a good 20 degrees warmer in here, at least. And with that refracted light, it's just delightful. It feels like you're in a prism, underneath a prism or a magnifying glass of some sort. And just, it's just so much fun to just be in here. Um, okay, I'm gonna set the sapote down right there in the central bed. I'm thinking that might be its spot. Um, the cacao is still not shown itself. I'm trying to sprout some in the sprout, sprouting room, um, but we'll see. I'd like this to be some sort of fruit producing or berry producing plant, perennial in the, in the middle. But for those of you that aren't familiar with the growing dome, let me just kind of show you how it's set up. And those of you, of you that are, then you'll be interested as well probably. This uh, outer bed is the perimeter bed, the skirt that follows all the way around the bed from the door and goes all the way around the dome. And this week I brought in probably two truckloads full of compost, um, another truck, couple truckloads for the outer beds, but this um, had dropped down about eight inches. So give them a nice big coating of compost and then a big, as you can see, skirt of straw. I love straw and so do the worms. It just decomposes well and it provides a, a barrier for the soil life and for the temperature fluxes. So these um, are the Damiana plants. And I think I mentioned in the last video that the, I'm switching over from um, annual greens like the bok choys and the kales to more of a perennial herbs and greens. So in that light, this is the, an experiment I'm doing with Damiana. I just read about it and was fascinated with it. She's blossoming right now. She's, this flower opens up over a period of about an hour and then closes down with the same quickness. If you blink, you miss it every day. I try to catch it. A um, bunch of mixed sages, lavenders, just mixed, mixed perennial greens and herbs coming in. Let's see. Over here you can see 
down in the corner I've got another goji. She's not doing nearly as well as the one I'll show you over in the other corner of the dome, but she's alive. Um, Meyer lemon just turning yellow from green. And these are the asparagus beds, the purple asparagus. I'm really excited. This will be year three in the spring, so it'll be harvest time. Mexican lime just is pretty much up to the ceiling now. And as well as the mango. The mango's been spitting off all sorts of different shoots. This was the original um, stem. And now she's taken off with some different vertical growth, so that's pretty cool. Um, she's also shading the asparagus or the uh, avocado, which the avocado seems to enjoy, and the lime shading the mango, which I just think is cool. Okay, so if you keep following the perimeter beds around, you can see I've got some mixed herbs and flowers over there, all sorts of sages, got some horsetail. Um, aloe vera and then as you keep coming around the dome I've uh, I'm just splicing in different greens right now some spinaches I just got some seeds from blackbirdnaturals.com and I'm really excited to start um, doing some of their greens uh, like the nettles and the lambs quarters so I'm gonna show you my seed collection too in a second I'll um, show you how I'm keeping my seeds and some of the seed varieties and companies that I'm using um, if you keep following the skirt, the outer perimeter skirt, hey Mr. Allo, um, you get to some more greens, big mix, some stuff I'm still getting ready to plant, some calendula starts, and let's see we get some nasturtiums and some mixed, the big mix of sages there. Every variety I can get my hands on. This is the white sage, the sacred sage. Also, seeds available from blackbirdnaturals.com. I love white sage. There's a bigger version of the white sage. You can see the shape she took. She took a big dip down and started climbing back up to kiss the sun. If you could smell this, <laughs> you would just go crazy. I mean, it's just, that's what it's for. It's aromatics and smudging. I love it. Beautiful intelligence. Okay, so I'm almost out of time here. I'm going to back up and show you the goji. This is the the oldest goji here in the dome and actually on in this whole food forest. And what I wanted to show you is she would be like 10 feet tall by now. This is her first central shoot. And what I notice is they keep spitting up these she keeps spitting up these stems and then they they come up as the central stem and then they droop over and I, eventually I guess they become 8 feet by 8 feet. So it's just beautiful to see that structure and that form taking place. This is the central stem now, and eventually she'll droop over, and this other one will come up. It's just gorgeous. Sorry, little girl, to drop some leaves. Underneath, calendula. So, it's the big mix. Some fresh soil. And that's pretty much it. Another goji plant right here. Still haven't planted her. Just couldn't decide on where to put her, so just decided to keep her in here for the winter. And ginkgo, my love. So that's where we're at with the growing dome. It just feels so good in here right now. So anyway, thanks for checking out the growing dome. Thanks for checking out the website. Thanks for checking out the YouTube channel. Really appreciate everybody. And um, thanks for growing along with us. And hopefully everybody's learning to uh, start learning to grow their own food or is doing it already or has been doing it for some time. It's so rewarding. And I'm just putting my stamp on that, too. It's just what I want to do the rest of my life. And it just feels so good to be working with these plants every day. So I think that's the pot that's going to live there forever. <laughs> Have fun growing your own food.